Hello, welcome to another video of the complete Angular course. In this video, I'll be going over Angular components and then we'll practice using them. Angular components comprise of three main files. There is a XML file to, that structures how a component might look, a style sheet file to decorate our HTML, and a class file with properties, methods, and metadata that describes the behavior of our component. Let's begin by creating a component. Open your Angular project on VS Code. Then execute the Angular CLI command ng generate component, followed by the component name in the terminal. If you're curious of how to open a terminal in VS Code, press and hold the control key and then press the tilde key on the keyboard. The tilde key is located left of the one key. Upon completion of the command, expand the app folder in the explorer section of VS Code. You will see that a folder is generated with the name you have given the component. Inside that folder, you will see the three files, the HTML, CSS, and class files. When we use the Angular CLI command, ng generate component, it will generate some boilerplate code just enough for our component to work. If we look inside the HTML file of that component, there is a paragraph tag with a message. That's what's going to be displayed when we add our component to the application. Let's try adding this into our app. But first, we need to understand how Angular displays its components. When we load our Angular application onto the browser, the browser will look for the index.html page and render whatever is in it. Let's go back to VS Code. That file is located inside the source folder of our project. If we take a look inside, you'll see a bunch of HTML code. But what you need to focus on are these tags right here, the app root tags inside the body. They came from a component. When we generate our project using the ng new command, it will create a component called app. Then it will place that component inside that page so it will get rendered onto the screen as well. What's really happening is that the browser is rendering our index.html page. And because we include the component inside that page, it also gets rendered onto the screen as well. Let's take a look inside the app component. Go back to VS Code and look inside the TypeScript file of the app component. There's a class with a component decorator. A component decorator tells us some metadata about our component. Data like what name is it called and which files are used. The selector property is the name we use to place our component inside the HTML file. If you recall, the app root tags is inside the body of the index.html page. The template URL property represents the location of the HTML file that is being used for our component, and the style URLs property represents the location of the style sheets that are used for the component. Let's use the same logic for adding our component to the application. First, look for the class file for the component that was created earlier in this video, and then look at the value of the selected property. We will use that to add the component to the application. Next, go to the app component HTML page and remove all the generated code. Select all the code and delete it. Then add the component inside the page using the angle bracket syntax for adding an HTML element. The app component HTML page is being rendered onto the browser because we included it in the index.html page. Since we included our component inside the app component HTML page, it will also get rendered. Let's verify that. Save our project and then start the local server for our project by running the ng serve command on the command prompt or terminal. Once the server is ready, go to localhost 4200 on the browser and we will see a text on the screen. We can also reuse the component by adding more of it. Go back to VS Code and add another component to the application. Then save and go back to the browser. Now there are two lines of text. As you can see with components, we can break our code into modules that we can then include in our application whenever we need to use it. We can easily go to a particular component and modify the code if we need to. It makes our code a lot easier to maintain. Let's take a moment to recap what we have learned. We learned that Angular component comprised of three main files, a HTML, CSS, and TypeScript file. We know how to create a component using the ng generate component command and how component gets rendered onto the screen. 
we learn that we have to look inside the component decorator to know what name we need to use to place the component in the HTML file. And lastly, we learn how to place a component in the HTML file by using the angle bracket syntax. Now, I want you to do this exercise. Create two components, one called red and another called blue. The red component displays a red square and the blue component displays a blue square. When we load the app onto the browser, we want to see a blue square underneath the red square. Pause the video and take a few minutes to do this exercise. Here's the solution. Generate the red and blue component with the ng generate component command. Modify the red component HTML page by replacing the paragraph element with a div element and apply the style class red square. Then go in the CSS file of the red component and add the red square class. Inside the class, we want the background color red and the width and height 100 pixels. Next, we'll do the same to the blue component. Expand the blue component folder and modify the HTML file. Replace the paragraph element with a div element and apply the style class blue square. Then go in the CSS file of the blue component and add the blue square class. Inside the class, we want to make the background color blue and the width and height 100 pixels. Now, in order to add the component to our application, we need to look at the component decorator to get the name we need. Go in the red component TypeScript file and look for the value for the selector property. Then go into the app component HTML page and replace the code. We will do the same for the blue component. Look inside the TypeScript file for the blue component and get the value for the selector property. Then go back into the app component file and add the component underneath the red component. Save the project and then go to the browser. We will see a blue square underneath the red one. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. If you have questions, leave a comment. Please like and subscribe for more videos.